an elementary course in synthetic projective geometry by Derek Norman Lamer. Chapter 4 continued. Point rows of the second order. Section 70. Permutation of points in Pascal's theorem. Section 71. Harmonic points on a point row of the second order. Section 72. Determination of the locus. Section 73. Circles and conics as point rows of the second order. Section 74. Conic through five points. Section 75. Tangent to a conic. Section 76. Inscribed quadrangle. Section 77. Inscribed triangle. Section 78. Degenerate conic. Problems. Section 69. Pascal's theorem. The points A, B, C, D, S, and S prime may thus be considered as chosen arbitrarily on the locus, and the following remarkable theorem follows at once. Given six points, one, two, three, four, five, six, on the point row of the second order, if we call L the intersection of 1, 2 with 4, 5, M the intersection of 2, 3 with 5, 6, N the intersection of 3, 4 with 6, 1, then L, M, and N are on a straight line. Section 70. To get the notation to correspond to the figure, we may take figure 13. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, S prime equal to 3, D equal to 4, S equal to 5, and C equal to 6. If we make A equal 1, C equal 2, S equal 3, D equal 4, S prime equal 5, and B equal 6, the points L and N are interchanged, but the line is left unchanged. It is clear that one point may be named arbitrarily and the other five named in 5 factorial equal 120 different ways. But since, as we have seen, two different assignments of names gives the same line, it follows that there cannot be more than 60 different lines L, M, N obtained in this way from a given set of six points. As a matter of fact, the number obtained in this way is in general 60. The above theorem, which is of cardinal importance in the theory of the point row of the second order, is due to Pascal, and it was discovered by him at the age of 16. It is, no doubt, the most important contribution to the theory of these loci since the days of Apollonius. If the six points be called the vertices of a hexagon inscribed in the curve, then the sides 1, 2, and 4, 5 may be appropriately called a pair of opposite sides. Pascal's theorem, then, may be stated as follows. The three pairs of opposite sides of a hexagon inscribed in a point row of the second order meet in three points on a line. Section 71. Harmonic points on a point row of the second order. Before proceeding to develop the consequences of this theorem, we note another result of the utmost importance for the higher development of pure geometry, which follows from the fact that if four points on the locus project to a fifth point in four harmonic rays, they will project to any point of the locus in four harmonic rays. It is natural to speak of four such points as four harmonic points on the locus and to use this notion to define projective correspondence between point rows of the second order or between a point row of the second order and any fundamental form of the first order. Thus, in particular, the point row of the second order, sigma, is said to be perspectively related to the pencil S when every ray on S goes through the point on sigma which corresponds to it. Section 72. Determination of the Locus it is now clear that five points, arbitrarily chosen in the plane, are sufficient to determine a point row of the second order through them. Two of the points may be taken as centers of two projective pencils, and the three others will determine three pairs of corresponding rays of the pencils, and therefore all pairs. If four points of the locus are given together with the tangent at one of them, the locus is likewise completely determined. For if the point at which the tangent is given be taken as the center S of one pencil and any other of the points for S prime, then besides the two pairs of corresponding rays determined by the remaining two points, we have one more pair, consisting of the tangent at S and the ray SS prime. 
Similarly, the curve is determined by three points and the tangents at two of them. Section 73. Circles and conics as point rows of the second order. It is not difficult to see that a circle is a point row of the second order. Indeed, take any point S on the circle and draw four harmonic rays through it. They will cut the circle in four points, which will project to any other point of the curve in four harmonic rays. For, by the theorem concerning the angles inscribed in a circle, the angles involved in the second set of four lines are the same as those in the first set. If, moreover, we project the figure to any point in space, we shall get a cone standing on a circular base generated by two projective axial pencils, which are the projections of the pencils at S and S prime, cut across now by any plane, and we get a conic section, which is thus exhibited as the locus of intersection of two projective pencils. It thus appears that a conic section is a point row of the second order. It will appear later that a point row of the second order is a conic section. In the future, therefore, we shall refer to a point row of the second order as a conic. Section 74. Conic through five points. Pascal's theorem furnishes an elegant solution to the problem of drawing a conic through five given points. To construct a sixth point on the conic, draw through the point numbered 1 an arbitrary line, figure 14, and let the desired point 6 be the second point of intersection of this line with the conic. The point L equals the intersection of 1, 2 with 4, 5 is obtainable at once. And also, the point N equals the intersection of 3, 4 with 6, 1. But L and N determine Pascal's line, and the intersection of 2, 3 with 5, 6 must be on this line. Intersect, then, the line LN with 2, 3, and obtain the point M. Join M to 5 and intersect with 6, 1 for the desired point 6. Section 75 tangent to a conic. If two points in Pascal's hexagon approach coincidence, then the line joining them approaches as a limiting position the tangent line at that point. Pascal's theorem thus affords a ready method of drawing the tangent line to a conic at a given point. If the conic is defined by the points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, figure 15, and it is desired to draw the tangent at point 1, we may call that point 1, 6. The points L and M are obtained as usual, and the intersection of 3, 4 with L, M gives N. Join N to the point 1 for the desired tangent at that point. Section 76. Inscribed Quadrangle. Two pairs of vertices may coalesce, giving an inscribed quadrangle. Pascal's theorem gives for this case the very important theorem. Two pairs of opposite sides of any quadrangle inscribed in a conic meet on a straight line upon which line also intersects the two pairs of tangents at the opposite vertices. For let the vertices be A, B, C, and D, and call the vertex A the point 1, 6, B the point 2, C the point 3, 4, and D the point 5, figure 16. Pascal's theorem then indicates that L equal the intersection of AB with CD, M is equal the intersection of AD with BC, and N, which is the intersection of the tangents at A and C, are all on a straight line U. But if we were to call A the point 2, B the point 6, 1, C the point 5, and D the point 4, 3, then the intersection P of the tangents at B and D are also on this same line, U. Thus, L, M, N, and P are four points on a straight line. The consequences of this theorem are so numerous and important that we shall devote a separate chapter to them. Section 77. Inscribed Triangle. Finally, three of the vertices of the hexagon may coalesce, giving a triangle inscribed in a conic. Pascal's theorem then reads as follows, figure 17, for this case, 
three tangents at the vertices of a triangle inscribed in a conic meet the opposite sides in three pairs on a straight line. Section 78. Degenerate Conic. If we apply Pascal's theorem to a degenerate conic made up of a pair of straight lines, we get the following theorem, figure 18. If three points A, B, C are chosen on one line, and three points A prime B prime C prime are chosen on another, then the three points L equal to the intersection of AB prime with A prime B, N equal to the intersection of BC prime with B prime C, M equal to the intersection of CA prime with C prime A, are all on a straight line. Problems. 1. In figure 12, select different lines u and u prime and find for each pair the center of perspectivity m. 2. Given four points a, b, c, d in the plane, construct a fifth point p such that the lines p, a, p, b, p, c, p, d shall be four harmonic lines. Suggestion. Draw a line a through the point a such that the four lines a, a, B, A, C, A, D are harmonic. Construct now a conic through A, B, C, and D having A for a tangent at A. 3. Where are all the points P as determined in the preceding question to be found? 4. Select any five points in the plane and draw the tangent to the conic through them at each of the five points. 5. Given four points on the conic and the tangent at one of them, to construct the conic. To construct the conic means here to construct as many other points as may be desired. 6. Given three points on the conic and the tangent at two of them, to construct the conic. 7. Given five points, two of which are at infinity in different directions, to construct the conic. In this, and in the following examples, the student is supposed to be able to draw a line parallel to a given line. 8. Given four points on a conic, two of which are at infinity, and two in the finite part of the plane, together with the tangent at one of the finite points, to construct the conic. 9. The tangents to a curve at its infinitely distant points are called its asymptotes if they pass through a finite part of the plane. Given the asymptotes and a finite point of a conic to construct the conic. 10. Given an asymptote and three finite points on the conic, determine the conic. 11. Given four points, one of which is at infinity, and given also that the line at infinity is a tangent line, to construct the conic. An Elementary Course in Synthetic Projective Geometry. This book was written by Derek Norman Lamer, Assistant Professor of Mathematics, University of California. It was published by Gin and Company, Boston, 1917, and is now in the public domain. The text is available for free download at Project Gutenberg, read by Jim Renholt. Programming and Illustrations by Jim Renholt, 2020. Corrections and comments are appreciated. Thank you for listening.